Local authorities confiscated Mohamed Bouazizi's unlicensed cart several times before. But in December 2010, he set himself on fire after a policewoman confiscated his cart and goods, then slapped him. He later died in early January 2011. His death would prompt protests that would change Tunisia's future. In a bid to quell the unrest, veteran leader Ben Ali announced in a television address that he would not seek a sixth term in office. He made sweeping concessions, saying security forces would no longer use live ammunition against protesters and promising freedom of the press and an end to internet censorship. However, determined to see an end to 23 years of repressive rule, Tunisians continued their protests. Tunisia's powerful main labor union held back in the early weeks, but then swung behind the uprising and organized general strikes until Ben Ali fled to Saudi Arabia on January 14th. The impact of the Tunisia uprising, whose pictures were uploaded across social media, was systemic throughout the region. Just over a week later, on January 25th, anti-government protests publicized on social media websites began across northern Africa, mainly Egypt and Libya. Tunisia's transition to democracy has been a difficult model to follow, and five years after the first protests, much of the region is still beset by conflict, instability and repression. Five years on, the North African country still stands as a model for democratic change. Catherine Ogunde, CCTV.